So more on the June 2017 exam solutions. Uh, great problem here is number 13. What we're going to have to use uh, is the inverse uh, trig functions. Uh, what the inverse trig functions can do is give us um, you know, give us the angle measure that we can expect will give us the ratio of the two sides we have. Um, now, they want to know the measure of angle S. So let's say that that is our theta. We usually call theta, um, you could call it X or theta. Okay, in case you see that, all it is is another way of, of kind of saying it's an unknown angle. So if this is the angle I'm interested in, the leg that's adjacent to it is right here with a 60. This is the opposite leg, and this, of course, is the hypotenuse. So then I still use my acronym. I still do everything the same way to start with. Uh, and then I do, I, I'm, I'm going to choose cosine. Okay. So cosine of theta, or angle S, is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so adjacent is 60, hypotenuse is 65. Now, I always, uh, when I do this, I change this to a decimal. I know not everybody does, but I like to change it to this uh, decimal. And then what I'm going to do is show you algebraically what the mechanics that really should happen. To get at theta, we have to get rid of cos. What gets rid of cos is a function called cosine inverse. Now, if we do this the right way, uh, cosine inverse of both sides. Now, algebraically, um, you know, it's consistent with what we've done in the past. It's just a new mechanic. Uh, but the same process. Do perform the inverse operation to get rid of things. So to get rid of cos, you perform cos inverse. Of course, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Um, so that's an important process. Okay. So let me just get the angle measure. Uh, I get 67.38. So that's close to 67 degrees. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. So it is a dilation followed by a translation. We can't promise that those two images are going to be congruent. Um, what's great about dilations is they do preserve slope. Now, so do translations. So both dilations and translations preserve slope. So AB will, without much thought at all, have to be parallel to A prime B prime. Okay. So that's got to be true. Oh, I skipped one. Similar, yes. Dilations are similarity transformations. Um, and then is A, A prime, that length, equal to B, B prime? Uh, that we don't know from a dilation. Okay? So the distance from A to A prime might be different than the distance from B to B prime in a dilation. A translation, these would be the same. So we got to get rid of that. Okay, the dilation loses both of these. Uh, so it's two and three. And that's it. Oh, uh, back to number 14. They accepted many different answers on this, but the intent of the problem really was to go similar and uh, parallel, right? Technically, these other ones should have been eliminated. A translation would preserve this, but a dilation shouldn't always. Sometimes it does. And congruence really should, we should lose that. So it should, it was intended to be choice three, but they did accept multiple answers, I believe, for that. So, all right. Uh, number 15, line segment. Okay, so a 2 to 3 ratio. So, okay, we're partitioning a segment. Partition a segment. 
All right, let me go get some uh, scrap graph paper because that's how I would do this one. Well, I went and got graph paper and then realized this is something that they're doing a lot more is uh, trying to put points off the graph so that we have to use the mechanics uh, instead of the graphing, you know, the algebra. So we will still stick with the idea of two to three means what we're going to have is five equal parts. All right. Uh, I'm going to have to just lose this whole concept here. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll sketch it real quick. R at negative 4, 5, we'll say, is estimated right around there. Okay. Now, 620 is going to be way up here off the chart. Okay, that's going to be W. All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to split this up into six equal parts. The first thing I would do is finish off the right triangle. Okay. Uh, and I would consider a change in X and a change in Y. How far is it? Well, the change in X, if you go from negative 4 to 6, that's 10 spaces. From 5 to 20 is 15 spaces. Okay, so each move, so each equal part, right? You're going to take a change in X of 10 divided by 5, so 2. Your change in Y is going to, for each, right, for each, is going to be 15 over 5, which is 3. So one of the ways I do this is I move from R at, what was that again? Uh negative 4, 5, and I'm going to move right to up 3. If you look at the direction, it is moving right to up 3, right to up 3. We're going to do that a couple of times, right to up 3, right to up 3, so that we create five equal parts. The first, right to up 3. The next, another right to up 3. Keep going. Another right to up 3. Another right two, up three, and then finally at 620. Okay, so then that's W. So that's, now we wanted to split it into, what was it again? Two to three. So that's going to be one, and that's going to be your second. So 0, 011 should be our answer right here. 0, 011. R to P, that's where P will land. So then there's three equal parts on the other side. 0, 11. Okay, 16. Square base. Now, this has caused a lot of problems for my students. When they look on the formula sheet for the pyramid, they'll have a volume formula this way. That capital B has been the one thing that's thrown us off a ton on this, uh, this type of problem. The capital B, there's a difference between capital B and lowercase b. Capital B implies area of the entire base. Uh, some of my students, a good portion of them, are considering um, no, just that to be the B. It's not. Okay. Um, the area of the entire base is key there. So if it's a square, the area of the base B is x times x, which is x squared, not just x. So pretty tricky. Uh, so please be careful. The other part is um, when we're given the volume, we have to realize 84 goes in that spot. All right, get, kind of forget about this for a second. So I'm plugging V84 in right underneath. I'm going to keep the one-third. My replacement for capital B now is X squared and my height of 7. Oops, sorry, replaced that with 7. Okay, so what I'll probably do is multiply by 3 and divide by 7. Let's knock out the 7 first. So we got one third x squared, right? Okay, multiply by 3 on both sides or divide by a third, whatever you want to say. Okay, so 36 equals x squared, and then we'll take the square root. So x is 6, and another way, if you didn't like all that, you could have tested the choices. Uh, that is another option that I'd like to encourage when it's part 1. Okay, test all the choices until 1 works. For 17, 
Okay. So this, these are angle bisectors, but we don't know that those are the same. Okay. If uh, TMR is 28, uh, then this is 28 because it was bisected, so it created equal halves. Um, the measure of angle OTS is what we're after. O to T to S. O to T to S. All right. So we want, we're searching for this angle right here. Okay. What information do we have? Let's look at this. There's one thing that's standing out at uh, to me right now. Since that's 40, and I could figure out that those are both the same, um, I'm kind of adding the 28s to get 56. And then uh, what I can do is add those to 180 uh, to get this up here. Right? Because these three have to, if we just isolate that, those three have to add up to 180. Now, I can get this one. And since the whole thing's 84, each of these pieces will be 42. Now, let's see if that takes us a step closer to getting this. It does. If I use this 42... Okay, think about it. I use that. I use this 42 up here, and I use the 28 from right there. Uh, I can figure out. Actually, I could use exterior angles theorem. Just add these to get that, but let's assume maybe that you don't know that. You could take 28 plus 42 to get 70. 180 minus uh, 70 is 110. That'll put 110 right here, but we want that. So 180 minus 110 is back to 70. So that's choice four. All right, last one for this video. Okay. Uh, now... They're telling us to rotate this triangle around 360 degrees around AB. What we're trying to do is explain to you the model that we'll create is a cone. I don't know if you can see that, but think if we rotated this 360 degrees, it's essentially creating a cone. Now, the radius of that cone is, is 4, and the height of that cone is 6. Okay, and it looks like it's in terms of pi. They won't always tell you to leave it in terms of pi. Uh, the way they did it in this case is they just left the choices in terms of pi. So that's what I'm going to have to utilize. So my volume formula is one-third pi r squared h for the volume of a cone. My radius is 4. My height is 6. And let's see, that looks like it's 32 pi. All right. That's it for this video. We'll finish off the part ones in the next one.